of all look hopefully to you and you give them their food in due season you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing the hand of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, no angels, no principalities, no present things, no future things, no powers, nor height, nor depth, none any other creature will be able to separate us for the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The lo word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot through their, from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. 
Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a beautiful place in the Holy Land on the Sea of Galilee. And the Sea of Galilee itself is a very beautiful place. But here there is a little chapel that was the first part of it was built in the fourth century. Inside that chapel is a large rock. And next to that rock is a mosaic, beautiful mosaic on the floor. Very simple. Five loaves in a basket and two fish. The rock is traditionally the place where Jesus performed the miracle that we hear about in the gospel today. And what a miracle it was. Jesus provided for his people. See, he was going to go off alone. He was going to go off properly to pray, to meditate, and the crowds followed him. Jesus had a hard time getting off alone because people always wanted to hear him. They always wanted to be near him. And when he saw the crowds, he was moved with pity. And so it says that he cured their sick. I'm sure he also taught them, because I can't imagine Jesus passing up a good opportunity to teach the people about the kingdom of God. And so he took care of them body and spirit. But then it got late and there was no food. They were far away from their villages. There were no McDonald's or Pizza Huts anywhere near. So the disciples say, send them home. Send them back to their villages so they can get something to eat. And Jesus says, feed them yourselves. They had to wonder. They had to wonder what this was about since they only have the five loaves and the two fish. But Jesus told them to do this after he said the blessing. They had to do their part. And then Jesus multiplied it. Jesus let it be able to be enough for 5,000 people and more. He says 5,000 men plus women and children. What a miracle. Jesus took care of the basic needs of his people. He had compassion for them. But one of the more important things about this <coughs> is that he told the disciples to do something. He didn't just do it himself because we have to do our part in Jesus' work. John Kennedy said that many times God's work on earth must truly be our own. And so they were asked to give the little food they had and I'd like to tell you a little story about Our Lady of the Lakes and a similar miracle. And that has to do with something the Knights of Columbus asked for last week. And so, you know, a person brought in two cans of food and a bag of rice. Someone else brought in some bread and a box of cereal. A little bit from each person, just a little bit, like the five loaves and two fish. And you know what? They gathered more than a half ton of food for the poor. See, when we do our little part, it adds up. And that's not counting money, because there also were donations of money. So when each of us does our part, and that part is feeding both the body and the soul. I mean, we are to help people who are poor. We are to help people who are in need with the basic needs of life. We also need to let them know that God loves them so that they are fed both body and spirit just as Jesus provided for the crowds. Now, this is the only miracle that appears in all four Gospels. The only one. And what reason might that be? It's so important because it foreshadows the Eucharist. It foreshadows the feeding upon the body and blood of Christ, where he began it, he began it at the Last Supper, and then he asked his disciples, the priests, to continue having this feast. And so it continues for the whole world, multiplied to the whole world, and for all time. Talk about multiplying bread. Except this isn't only bread, it is his body. This is not only wine, 
It is his blood. That's important to remember because we as Catholics believe and know that in our Eucharist, there is the real presence of Jesus Christ. He said, this is my body. This is my blood. He didn't say, this is a symbol of my body and blood. He didn't say, this represents my body and blood. He didn't say, this reminds us of my body and blood. He said, this is. This is my body. This is my blood. And so he wanted to be with us so much that he gave us this sacrifice. One sacrifice done on the cross almost 2,000 years ago. But that one sacrifice is presented anew. Not represented, but re-presented. The same sacrifice every time we go to Mass. Now when Jesus taught this, he taught it after the, uh, the multiplication of the loaves in St. John. He taught the bread of life discourse. Some of the people left him. They said, this is too hard a teaching. This is too radical. And so they went away. So it must have been a very serious teaching. People wouldn't walk away because he said, this is a symbol. He said, eat my body and drink my blood. And some people couldn't handle that. But we can. And we receive or if we're at home, we receive Jesus into our hearts because Jesus comes to us in many ways. And we have joy. Joy because God is with us. We feel the honor, the honor to be God's people and to receive his very self. We feel great privilege because we are able to be with Jesus. We feel that intimacy he wants to be a friend and more than a friend. He wants to be part of us, so intimately touching us that he's part of our hearts and part of our lives. We feel the salvation that comes because by that sacrifice, Jesus saved us. And we feel the love, the love of Jesus Christ that gave us himself on the cross and gave us his body and blood as food for the journey and that he will be with us in body and in our hearts all through our lives, all through our way to him. St. Paul tells us something very important today. He says that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Nothing. And so he says tribulations can't, persecutions can't, anguish can't. He gives a list. And we might add to that list ourselves these days because we are having a world that is in so much trouble but we can say that even protest and violence cannot separate us from the love of Christ. We can say that storms, power outages, or all the things that could happen now will not keep us from the love of Christ. Illness, disease, even COVID will not keep us away from the love of Christ. We will make it through everything, economic difficulty, Jesus still will be there with love. And in faith, we find that he will provide for us. Maybe not everything we want, but we will never lack for what we need. And we'll have God's love in our hearts. What a great gift. St. Paul says that even death and life cannot separate us from Christ. And you know, all one of us, every one of us is gonna die one day. We don't like to think about it, but it's true. And that cannot separate us from Christ. In fact, it unites us more with Christ. So I remember when my mother was dying of cancer, during her last time at home, she invited people over and had the anointing of the sick. And when I anointed her, she was smiling and she was happy because she knew she was going home. And when she was in the hospital for her last days, the last things that she said to me before she went unconscious were things of joy. First of all, she told me she liked the colors of my shirt. <laughs> hey, you never know what's going to impress somebody. And then she says, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. She was the one who was dying of cancer, and she was comforting us. It's going to be all right. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So... 
I want you to remember how much Jesus loves you. I want you to remember what joy and privilege it is to be his disciple, to be one of his people, and to always know that he is with us, that he will never let us go, and that he always loves us. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Mindful of God's promise that we will delight in rich fare, we present our prayers with trust in God's faithfulness. That church leaders, stewards of our faith, will live in a way that will draw all believers to know Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world government authorities will work together in the cause of global peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who live with chronic illness will find assurance that they are always in God's tender care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we would show Christ in the world and in our community, respecting and dignifying every human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish will grow in faith and respect for all believers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rosario and Antonieta Mitiga, deceased members of the Porosco family, and Conrad Doig Hastings, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your everlasting covenant. We bring our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, the The mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion for our sake, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember your servants, Rosario and Antoinette Mitiga, the deceased members of the Perowska family, and Conrad Doig Hastings, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who are united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, from the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. those who are praying with us at home online and for anybody who is not receiving communion for any reason let us pray an act of spiritual communion my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Thank you. 
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us together pray the campaign prayer. Loving God, at this time in the life of our parish, we turn to you with grateful hearts for what we have and with great anticipation for what is yet to be. Bless us with a sense of unity, a spirit of cooperation, and a generous sacrificial heart as we face the responsibilities and challenges of the renovation of your house. We know there is much to do. We believe our goals are rooted in your word and in your work. Please guide us, strengthen us, and help us build up our faith, family, and future now and through the years to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. And I'd like to introduce to you and tell you something about this man on my left, our new pastor, Father Chris Hoffman. <laughs> Father Chris was raised in Milwaukee and moved to the Diocese of Orlando after he graduated from St. Mary's Seminary. He was ordained a priest by Bishop Thomas Grady on December 5th, 1987. Both in seminary and as a priest, Father Chris served for 24 years as an Air Force chaplain, including serving overseas, and retired as a lieutenant colonel. I have to salute when I say that. <laughs> he has had a number of different assignments in the diocese, including high school chaplain for two high schools, Father Lopez and Bishop Moore. He has been the pastor of St. Clair's here in Deltona from 1995 to 2001 and perhaps some of you know him from St. Clair's. He was also Catholic chaplain for Stetson University and has been about nine years at his most recent assignment, Our Lady of Hope Parish in Port Orange. He is co-founder of the social justice group Faith, is involved in Marriage Encounter, and is the state chaplain for our fourth degree Knights of Columbus. Father Chris loves baseball. His favorite, favorite team at first was, of course, the Milwaukee Brewers, but now he roots for the Tampa Bay Rays. He enjoys traveling, and Father Chris is the oldest of three sons of Ken and Betty Hoffman, who are longtime parishioners here at Our Lady of the Lakes, and in fact are here now, so Ken and Betty, if you just stand up. Thank you for giving us a priest and giving a priest to the church. And welcome, Father Chris, to your new parish. We look forward to being with you on our journey as a faith community. May God bless you on the way. Thank you, Father Frank. And thank you all. I hope to get to know you, but obviously in this crazy time that we live, it'll be more of a challenge, but we'll find a way. So thank you, and God bless. All right, I'm gonna do the announcements because I have a microphone, <laughs> but we'll kind of work out that in later, later in masses. Thank you for following the guidance of our ushers and for participating in keeping the church as safe as possible for all of us. We strongly encourage everyone to wear a mask and appreciate the consideration for others that you display by wearing a mask. We rely on your support to help us ensure the safety of all. For those who are participating in mass online, thank you for joining us. We will continue to live stream mass every day at the regularly scheduled mass times. You can also join us online each night at 8 p.m for the rosary, and at 8.30 p.m. for the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. In the event that you are not able to be seated in the church for weekend Masses, you can also park in the back of the chapel and follow the Mass online. You may receive Holy Communion in the chapel following Mass. Our Lady of the Lakes Culture of Life Ministry, formerly known as Respect Life, invites you to spiritually adopt an unborn child. Now, spiritual adoption doesn't mean you actually take a baby into your house. It means that you give a name to a child somewhere in the world who is unborn and may be in danger of abortion. And so what we're going to do is ask you to pray for that baby for nine months. If you wish to participate, please write your name, telephone number, email address, and the name you wish to give to your spiritually adopted child on a three by five card. Next weekend, please drop the card in the collection basket at Mass or in the drop box by the wall at the entry of the church. 
We greatly appreciate all of you who have continued to support our parish. Many of you have joined the ranks of those who are making your offertory contribution online, and we thank you for your faithful support. Those who are giving online know how simple and hassle-free it is to do so. You don't have to worry about remembering to write that check or have cash with you when you come to Mass. And so we encourage you to consider signing up for online giving, and if you need help, please go to call the office and they will give you assistance. I believe that's all the announcements. Okay. Please stand for the final blessing. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass ascended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks to God.